all right, all right, y'all. We back. We back. Keeping it leaders and readers. So we about to finish reading. We get done here with y'all. All right, all right. Cell mediated immunity. The helper T cell activates a B cell into antibody secreting mode. This is the the T cell and the B cell. Let me see up here. Chapter five. A non-activated B cell turns into an activated B cell. The suppressor T cell deactivates the B cell that has been stimulated by a helper T cell. So these are the white blood cells, the T cells. This helper cell sends the signal to wake this cell up with the antibody. And then after it attacks the virus, then this one puts it back to sleep. All this happened inside your body. A virus infected cell, a killer T cell. The killer or cytonic T cell kills cells that are infected with viruses. So if you catch the virus, then your, your, your white blood cells are gonna kill the infected cell. This is the cell, this is the white blood cell. This is the virus. When your cell is infected with the virus, then the cell sends the signal. Bam, 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 bam. Then they send the army, then they get the virus. That's the T cell. You have one, two, you have nine different types of white blood cells. Neutrophil, esophil, monocyte, basophil, inflammatory T cells. The inflammatory T cell attracts inflammatory cells, such as neutrophils, esophils, monocytes, and basophils to the site of an infected injury. So this is like the, the white blood cell army forming like Voltron. They, they form like Voltron and then they go after the, the virus. Non-specific effector cells. Common targets of non-specific effector cells include cancer cells, bacteria, and body cells that have been infiltrated by viruses. So when a virus enters your body, then it gets attacked by non-specific cells as well as white blood cells. These are non-specific cells. Cancer cells, virus infected cells, bacteria. They all get attacked by the non-specific cells. As you can see, it comes the non-specific cells coming to get the bacteria and about to eat them up. Get those bacteria out your body. Get your white blood cells, T cells, B cells. The natural killer cell destroys cancer and virus infected cells without using antibodies or other immune system modalities. It's the natural killer cell. It's coming to get this virus, these cancers. The macrophage that are free to circulate rather than confined to a specific organ can locate and evolve foreign invaders without help from other cells. <clears throat> this is the killer, this is the worm that worms in your body free to get the, the viruses out your body. The neutral fill, like the microphage, is a pathocyte, which means that it can eat other cells. It's gonna eat those bacteria out your body. Question is, how do you build your white blood cells? How the immune system, chapter six, how the immune system identifies intruders? In the previous chapter, we learned that detection of a foreign invader is a crucial step in the body's defense itself. But how exactly do the cells of the immune system know what doesn't belong? Since foreign intruders come in so many varieties, there's also a variety of ways in which to recognize them. Are we born with these recognition abilities or do they develop only after an encounter with the enemy? To begin, the immune system is able to identify certain organisms as being foreign because they look different from other cells. 
Bacteria, for example, are made up of certain proteins that simply are not seen in a normal body tissue. While viruses are recognized because the genetic code they carry is unique. The antennas or receptors present on the surface of green T cells are specifically designed to detect these characteristics. B cells and the antibodies that secrete are specially adept in catching intruders like bacteria, which usually are found outside of other T cells, specializing in identifying viruses and other organisms that invade the inner working of the body cells. Well, we know that a virus has to attach to your DNA or your RNA because it can't live on its own. So, and then the, the T cells and the B cells devour the viruses when they enter inside your body. B cells and T cells depend on the initial exposure to the enemy before they came out and attack, as we will see in later chapters. These cells must be presented with a specific antigen, usually by a microphage, before they can multiply, defeat the enemy, and linger in the form of memory cells to provide long term protection. This is a time consuming process, therefore, some of the some form of defense is necessary before the initial stages of foreign invasion. The complement system accomplishes this function. The complement system is a substance found in the blood that can bind to the surface of any cell, be it a bacteria or a normal body cell, and attract pathocytes such as neutrophils and macrophages to destroy it. Complement cells can also kill cells on its own by punching holes in the cells outer membranes, which allows enough water in to cause the cells to actually burst. Normal body cells, however, are protective with special equipment that deactivates complement effects, so only cells that aren't walking are vulnerable to attacks by the complement cells. It's good to know. Still, some bacteria are crafty and have developed ways to penetrate the complement barricade. Fortunately, all of the body's defenses have a backup system and complement cells are no exception. When such a resistant bacteria do, do manage to slip by, they are spotted by microphages that, that are continuously on the crowd. Microphages send a message to the liver which quickly manufactures a substance that can bind to the bacteria and change their shape. Complement cells can then treat this deformed invader as an entirely new organism and call in the pathocytes to do their job. While the complement system is our inborn means of recognizing the enemy, we also depend on other complements components that can adjust to the body's changing needs. In chapter 5, we learn that B cells use antibodies mounted on the surface in order to detect intruders. We also learn that each B cell produces only one type of antibody, which in turn is effective against only one type of foreign invader. However, then, are B cells able to recognize many of the of different enemies? The key lies in the genetic makeup, the DNA, that makes that's who we are. That defines our eye and hair color and size and shape and everything else that is inherited also determines our antibody making ability. We inherit this ability in the form of puzzle pieces that can be reassembled in different ways depending on the needs of different cells. In addition, the glues that are used to put the pieces together can vary extensively. This alone allows for a staggering degree of variation, but it doesn't mean that the antibody making machinery within the cells can mutate or change into an entirely new factory capable of producing a completely different antibody type. All this adds up to a tremendous potential for diversity. The innate complement system and the adaptive antibody system work hand in hand. The binding of complements to the bacteria can increase the production of antibodies by the B cells. Conversely, the binding of antibodies to an organism can activate the complement system. It is a perfect example of different settings of the immune system combining their efforts to form a common good. Hmm. So, in conclusion, you have an immune system and you have a complementary immune system, and they work hand in hand. So, we're going to leave it at that, and we're going to get into chapter, the rest of chapter 6 tomorrow on recognition of 
and specific specific city specific city for different things. Yeah, all parts of people. 